and communication technologies, how one PC talks to another PC over a network and things like that. So from there, the idea was born. Because uh, people were feeling that if there are various different OEM vendors, right, and if you are making a network, including a couple of them, then they should seamlessly talk to each other. So for that, that that's the basic sole purpose of this idea. So it was formed in 1986. Its mission is to make internal work better, safer for all the applications which you run on. Uh, 50, 60 working groups will be there. Overall, I mean, they keep coming and keep going out, right? As and when the work finishes for a given working group. So these working groups actually work together. The people from various walks of life, like somebody will be from uh, OEM who is developing protocol, somebody will be from ISPs who is using those protocols, somebody will be an application developer who will use those uh, OS uh, level stuff to basically talk to other stuff. So all those people come together to define a particular RFC. And uh, there is a huge um, process actually which, which needs to be followed, which makes sure that there is no bias. It's mainly technology driven. The discussion will usually be not, okay, I am from uh, X company and my product is better than yours. The discussion is always whether this particular feature will make sense for people or not, usually. And when a, uh, a working group is coming out with the RFC, IETF usually look for interoperable implementations of that protocol to be made available as examples for IETF to make it a RFC. So what happens is that when the work is in progress, it's called internet draft and every OEM who is basically interested in that work will create an implementation of that, either in their router, switches or firewall. From security, ideas, ideas and all those things. And then there should be at least two or three such vendors who would have implemented that particular draft and show that these devices work with each other. So until that happens, they do not basically make it a standard track RFC. So this makes sure that the work which basically is coming out of idea actually is being used at the end of it. Right? So what is an RFC? So RFC is, as I said, it's a request for comments and it's used for implementing interoperable uh, implementations. So there are three series which is available. One is best current practices, there is a FOIA information, and there is a standard track. So best practices actually usually comes out when an RFC or a standard has been implemented and deployed. So what are the current best practices around that deployment people have learned? So usually the service providers who are using those uh, RFC actually come out with such things where they say that if you are using this particular standard, use it this way, which is the most efficient and the most useful way of doing it. And uh, ITF internally has uh, three first teams where one ITF where basically this all this work is done. There is a research task force, IRTF, which basically always look at the future. What new basically technology needs to be looked at. And they basically develop a mandate on researching various topics. They have again the subgroups within them. And then they come out with, okay, this is something which is much more interested and much more practically possible to do. And then they pass it on to IT. And then internal architecture board, which takes the policy decision on how the internal architecture should be. And then in an independent submission. So, for example, what happens is that Cisco is there, right? Cisco has an uh, IEPRP protocol, which runs in exclusively, there's a proprietary protocol for them. And they basically created an independent submission sometime back when their IEIRP, uh, this patent actually expired. So, now what can happen is that anybody who basically wants to talk to Cisco in that language, in that IEIRP protocol, he can go ahead and pick it up from there and uh, uh, implement it and make it an interoperable with Cisco. Okay, so uh, as uh, Vinayak was saying, right, the basically the reason for doing this thing is to create more awareness. I see that a lot of people are already aware about the idea, but there is some numbers which basically I got gathered from uh, the statistics which is available on IT of work. So I just wanted to compare it with somebody who is our neighbor and they have been very, very, very aggressive in IDA for last couple of years. So you can act, the numbers will speak for themselves. India started sometime in 95. The first guy 
side contributing base in India for some time in 1995. And then, even then, today we are at the 10th position in the number of RFCs which we have there, or in the number of people who have basically contributed to IJ. In comparison to China, they start sometime in around 2005. They are already number third. They have produced almost like 747 documents and they have 435 authors and by it has only 101. And in this 101, if I basically, I can name some of them which basically have many out of the 226 documents, there might be some 3-4 people who have more than 40 documents there. So, there is a very small percentage of people who basically have been uh, working with uh, various working groups and uh, producing documents, right? And we want to change that. There are, there are various reasons, I'll just go through that. But we, the, this session is one of those uh, sessions where we want to create more awareness. You go, to, go back to your companies or enterprises, go ahead and talk about it, get people on board to basically start contributing to IDF. Okay, so the last one actually is something which uh, Vinayak and myself are like dreaming that bringing an IDF meeting to India. So it doesn't happen in the last like 20, 25 years. ITF meetings usually happen three times in a year. Two times it happens usually in North America, and one time it happens outside North America. Sometimes maybe in Asia or Canada or Europe. So we basically want this ITF meeting to come to India, and we basically are trying to gather a momentum to build, like making enterprises come and participate in it for that purpose. Okay, so why should India participate? So. If you look at right, what happens is why IDF came in picture was that there were problems and uh, there were problems which need to be solved. And these problems would be uh, based on, so people basically when they are raising the problem, then there will be people who will try to solve that problem. So India has unique problems from that perspective. India has lossy networks, so you open your laptop and try to work through it, you will find that the internet connection goes up and down. Right? And uh, remote areas without much electricity. Last mile connectivity is always a problem. Fine. So there is help of this uh, So uh, the cost implications. So uh, India has unique problems which needs to be solved by us because usually what happens is the service provider which are there in India will basically be currently taking US or Europe market solutions and trying to put them in India. Which may be working, but most of the time there are specific problems which are not being solved. So what happens is we basically do not get the proper internet services or the application which we are building is not for uh, basically understanding the Indian uh, scenario and then building those pro uh, applications. So that's where we basically want India to contribute. Another thing is learn from world's best. So ITF is such a community where world's best engineers on the internet side will usually be coming and uh, we want our engineers, Indian engineers to learn from them. And then we basically want to create more thought leaders from India. So we basically not only want them to contribute to IDF, they want, we want them to take the leading position on it. So India has a specific problem which should be basically created as a working group if you want and then basically India should lead that and uh, propose that this is what solution which works in India, show them the interoperable implementation of that and get it extended. And it is not only India specific problem we look at, most of the South Asia and Africa will have the similar problem. And uh, the, one of the idea actually is uh, coming from Mr. Modi's uh, Digital India thing, we want to project India as a hub of uh, uh, creating innovation technology on the internet side. So, uh, as I said, this is one of the goals which we are basically, very short term goal we are looking at, bringing the ITF meeting to India and uh, we want to create more participants from India for that purpose. Yeah. When you bring this kind of meeting, uh, please send advance notice to the industry yeah. so that we can plan actually how we can collaborate and work with the industry. So, this is just a free call. Yeah. Uh, a lot of meetings which is uh, normally the CTPP meeting is Hashtag coming to India, I am mm -hmm. getting this information from my headquarters rather 
No, so this is basically still being worked out. It is not happening. We are trying to create more awareness to bring it in India. Okay, and we need help from you, all of you. I mean, the enterprises which are there in India, anywhere, like you look, look at the, the security companies, OEMs, on networking and networking domain, right, and service provider companies, ISP. We want all of these guys to come together to basically help us in doing this. Yeah. Uh, very well said. Uh, you should take the prior information. Now the timeline with the earliest date can happen in 2018, November. Okay. So we still have three years, but the challenges are immense. One, the ITM secretary wants to have three places as alternatives. Okay. Uh, and the requirement is that you should have at least 50-60 uh, bars near the place where it happens. Now where in India you have that kind of bars? Okay. Back. So most of the worst in ITF which happens. This is a very unlike conference where people don't go in suits. They come in half pants, they come in t-shirts. <coughs> Hardcore engineers. Okay. Most of the work which happens inside the conference room is a testimonial to that. So while all of us are in suits, it means we are not engineers. I have a problem with So primarily a lot of work happens outside the meeting rooms. A lot of collaboration has to come the people. So they want a place where at least a lot of budget hotels are available, a lot of places to go out and chill this kind of the place where it is available. And 1,500 people getting their visas moved in a very smooth way. So not only industry, Ministry of External Affairs also needs to get involved into this. So but three years time frame is good, but we are in the bidding process now. Uh, but who will Invest in the initial 330,000 US dollars. That is the minimum commitment which you have to give to ITF Secretary. So, who is going to fund that? Is the government going to fund that? So, if you talk to various government officers, some say yes, it is okay for government to go for a full okay. But not many times you don't get that positive feedback. So, again, Nag, that is a pointer that on whose commitment should we go ahead and bet? Otherwise, it will be a very bad scenario where two of us are going to go ahead and then have the thing. So you know the story when the fire so then this one was the thing. So there is commitment given by DNC and then at the end of the day we had the faced a lot of problems. But we are not really repenting on the problems that we faced. Ultimately, at least we took that hit on our budget. But at least that meeting had happened in India. First time that happened in India. I think so, we need to show that leadership that somebody comes fired and probably. Uh, uh, contribute to this to happen in the So, uh, two ways we should go. So, one is uh, try to look at the government, try to knock the door, uh, doors there. Because there is a lot of story we talk about this make it India. And that was the initial remark I made. Without this kind of strong technical foundation, the dream of making India may not really materialize. So, we need to relate to the larger story. If we relate to larger stories and probably hit the right level, the funding may come from the government. But at the same time, we should also try to get, reach out to the industry. But industry is not a typical sponsorship level. We need to talk to some leader in industry uh, and probably uh, in a very big thinking way so that we capture attention at that level and that gives us a significant level of funding. So these are two ways I see which happening. Otherwise, there is no other way that I see uh, by the way that we have that for ISO, as for the sponsorship way. That's not the way that it should happen. It should be. Yeah. So, so this, is, this is a community. So, but, that, but somebody has to take. Uh, that. No, no. We, we want when it is going to be hosted, uh, there is going to be a huge say, visa challenge in terms of approving 1500 people. So you have to take government on board much again. Okay. That is that time. Okay. Otherwise, they will issue visa with red card and notice, so all the 1500 people will face the path when they go on anyway. Which has happened in ITF, subject back. So that is the situation we don't want. Secondly, um, 
as an act of, as uh, what you said, I completely agree that it, ha it has a relation to the Make in India campaign which the government is trying to talk about every day. And then there has to be something connected to the ground. And this is one way where they can very positively and forcibly say that you know, we are doing things which are connected to the ground and also uh, what we are doing. Yeah, I think uh, the very important point, uh, why as a country we have interest? Interest because we are now aspiring to uh, make a big technology driven kind of uh, entrepreneurship in the country. That will happen only because the competence. Competence is there, definitely, but that is at architectural level or implementation level or audit level. But developing product and understanding this technology nuances that extent to that complexity requires you to be familiar with this kind of uh, uh, development, requires you to be engaged with the consultability for this as well. And that's what China has been doing, we have been discussing about this. That's what if you look at uh, Hawaii as an example. There are a lot of people have been contributing to IDF standards. There are some people in India as well that are contributing to IDF standards. So, the technology leadership will come only this ground of actions happen. So, the basic intent of this meeting is to create those ground of actions. So, uh, ISO we have worked, but ISO is still a managerial administrative kind of standards. They are levels of technical standards, but these are very hard out technical uh, aspect that we are uh, trying to attack. And if you write it, improves at least some aspect of this one. And I think Anupam has been working for that. He has been creating community. You can just explain the uh, thing that you have been doing to create that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, uh, okay. So, basically, uh, this is the starting point. Okay. This is the starting point to bring IED of meeting to India. But what we actually want is more participation from Indian companies, private companies, OEM services, ISPs to come forward and start contributing to IDF. And that will make sure that this IDF meeting keep coming back to India. So just to basically uh, increase this uh, participation part. So this is awareness. So there are basically various stakeholders if you look at where we can actually uh, go and talk to people and try to get them come uh, with no contribution to IDF. One is the colleges like VTech, EdTech, PhDs. Whatever is happening, we can go and basically talk to thesis people and things like that. Corporate like services, companies which are out there like Infosys, PCS, where uh, I, I myself basically all in Infosys, I am working for a recent client, but even then I could basically go ahead and contribute to IDF. Uh, OEMs, Cisco, Juniper, Huawei, and uh, ISPs like Airtel, Reliance, Tata. So we need to basically all those guys come together. In this OEM, all these Indian product companies. Yes, yes. So any any company which basically has anything to do with internet for that matter actually can contribute. Because one way or other, if you are looking at right, security technology or working on something which basically a touch internet, right? Application development kind uh, development companies like or e-commerce companies like Flipkart and all, all those can actually contribute because they have unique problems here which needs to be solved. They might be solving it in some way, but for India context. They need to come together and do something like this. Yeah, I, I just give it to Anupam now. I mean, he can. No, I think it um, goes ahead three years in terms of finalizing the place where they want to host the meeting. Okay, so. Currently, uh, 2018, so another challenge is to respond to that. They have three physical meetings every year. One happens in North America, the second happens in Europe, the third happens in Asia Pacific. So the March meeting generally happens in US, the July meeting happens in Europe, and the Asia Pacific meeting happens in November. So now, we, 2016 is already booked, 2017 Singapore is trying very hard. So the earliest we can get is 2018. Okay. So, and their secretary comes at least three times before the meeting to see the place, see what kind of uh, sessions, how many breakout sessions will be required, whether the facility is good enough or not. So it takes a little more time uh, to find out. Yes. So any particular technological topic you are asking or in terms of overall? Okay. Uh, we have a group.
So I will give you, I'll share the email list uh, on which we talk. So we can you want to subscribe to that and you can you can come. Anybody else has any questions? There are uh, confirm actually copies for and then I can, yeah. Uh, does uh, IITF give you any funds for uh, promotional uh, campaigns which has recorded as well? No. So, funds are not available, but there is uh, something called uh, sponsorships available through ISOP, where uh, the society actually funds people who uh, wants to contribute to ITF and want to attend ITF meetings, things like that. So those kind of things are available. But can you do awareness building programs at the university level? Uh, if you had to do such a program, how would you fund Would ISOC fund that? Yes. Uh, so we have applied from ISOC in Qatar and we have also got that. So I'll, I'll just give me a moment I'll share. much more uh, like formal is required. Uh, either it comes from the company where basically company puts it into their appraisal systems also or it, it comes from uh, like uh, colleges where and PhD or Antec people are doing that. Okay, if you are doing something like that, try to put it as a uh, draft or RFC which will make it much more uh, uh, useful. And see, it's, a, it's, a, it's not something like a IEEE where it is much more theoretical. Here it is much more practical and uh, the implementation has to be available. Technological platform to have a single short, short 
then capacity development was definitely required. After so many people were already contributing from India, but they either don't talk with each other or they don't come together at the same time. So that was required to be done. Because they are essentially the mentors for the tomorrow's people. Then we had to increase our remote participation uh, numbers. And then actually going into the meeting is very different from remote participation. So people had to. But who will go, who will be going, how they will be selected by the organization, what can be the various parameters. So that was something which we had to work upon. And then finally, the state of this. So the last point is the reason why we are here today. Okay. To give you that what has happened till now. So we created a program uh, out of Python Kolkata called uh, Indian ITF Capacity Building Program, IIC. And we created this website, a portal in itself. So wherever we are going for this kind of awareness campaigns, uh, that is listed here. And the reason for doing this was uh, I attempted to call with one of the ITF secretary people and said that I am interested in doing ITF media. So he not only laughed, but the way he said the entire thing was that do you have enough people who are interested in IT? Do you have people who understand these standards and technical protocols? While I understand as an outsourcing, you are very good place. You have so many big companies coming out of there, but I don't see that kind of involvement in the standards and protocol space. And it was like a complete slap on your face because you never had anything to showcase them in terms of numbers. That we have 50 contributors or 40 contributors. So you have to go to the ITF website and find out Bharat, find out Drone, the two of these people who are there, and then get in touch individually with them. And when I had uh, it, uh, he has been very instrumental in getting all these yeah. people together. Drone is in your team, yes, sir. So, so the first time I have seen the boss smiling in where is Junior's name and stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, so we, we have to encourage yes. So I will ask you to my boss also. <laughs> <laughs> so we what we did was we created awareness camps. Uh, then the model which we applied was that once this awareness camp was created, we created a conference on the line of IDF itself. Okay. So we said that you submit papers on the existing protocols. So out of the college students and university students, suddenly you can't expect them to give a complete new protocol. So we asked them to go back, study HTML, study XMPT, and come back with what we have understood. Okay. So till now we have got around 48 papers on those lines. And we have identified three or four sparks, and there are people uh, that, that who have contributed, who well, have started contributing into the idea after this IIC, because they now know that there is a forum. Okay. Uh, then we have around, uh, we have completed like this seminar, four seminars till now. Uh, so those numbers are ready here. And these 640 people are hardcore technology oriented people who are interested in IT. So they come and register on this. Okay. And this is a mailing list, uh, where you can get involved and suggest uh, what you want to do for it. And then we have around 12 institutions which have already partnered with us in terms of hosting this awareness camp or hosting IICDs. Some of them even have taken that as part of their annual calendar. So automatically next year it will be ready without much effort. So that's how it is planned to grow. Now this is some of the pictures we did. We started from Guwahati. Uh, then we went to a college in uh, Havra, the Calcutta. Then we entered into, and interestingly, when we approached IITs and uh, the Indian Institute of Sciences, we were asked to go out and completely never come back. Okay. Because, and the reaction was, we were not giving any money to them. Secondly, we are asking them to host a conference. Okay. So, so IITs and Institute of Sciences were the ones who completely asked us to go back and never come back, uh, go out and never come back. Okay, which was very shocking. And it is very, I am very glad to share that now IIT Kharagpur is coming up and saying that we want to host uh, this kind of conference in Kharagpur. But initially, the legwork of going to these colleges the experience was very bad to the extent of being protected. Okay. Now, so we selected some colleges where we, yes please. 
So some of these colleges we entered into the interior part of the country. Okay. Some of these colleges nobody has heard the name. Okay. Malabum Institute of Technology, abbreviated as MIT. So nobody has heard the name. Okay. That we have an MIT beside this one. Uh, but then the atmosphere when we entered into the college was like electric. Okay. 300 students of all different engineering streams trying to participate in one conference never before. Okay. So, so we found that there is a lot of need if we move outside the cities and this is just a perspective which I have wanted to share that not necessarily you will find good quality IT and contributors only in the cities. It, it can happen in various places. Yes. So uh, we did it in RTI also. Then we did it with uh, a lot of other colleges uh, uh, in NASA and other places. We also, uh, and this is a picture of the IICB seminar on the lines of IPM, wherein all these people who where we have done awareness camps, these colleges are coming together and contributing papers. Okay. So uh, this is we have done till now three uh, of these kinds. And this is a picture of where we could we were able to get all these contributors together in time. Okay. So Bharat I met first time, I heard his name, I I looked at his picture in LinkedIn and other places, but physical meeting is very important. Okay. And that's what we were able to do in uh, October this year, wherein all the ID contributors from Bangalore were pulled together in one conference in LinkedIn. Okay. And that is was the attainment of the second objective of this program. Now, what came out of Bangalore is again very important. So, what we could understand was that uh, more technical awareness around IPA, that it is completely individual based. You don't need to go out, you can contribute sitting at your own table. Okay. Uh, so, that kind of awareness needs to be there in the organization itself. So, that is one. And then, we require a huge amount of remote participation to get the first hand feeling that what happens exactly in this kind of meeting before we go and push people to go and attend physical meeting. Because so much work happens on the mailing list that the meeting is just a step ahead. So nobody sets the context of the discussion. So they start from there the work was left on the mailing list. So if you are not following the mailing list, you will, be, you will not be able to sync up. Uh, in the physical meeting. So that is very important that you have to be party to a mailing list and attend even remotely the meeting which is very relevant to that mailing list. That's how you will be able to collect the dots. And then we wanted to have a database of IDF contributors of Indian origin. So if you go to IDF, you will find not many Indians. But not necessarily they are from India, but they are very sympathetic towards doing anything in India. Okay. So we have not even pulled up that kind of resource question now, so that can be done. And the last post I have in India. So the earliest, as I said, we can do it in 2018. Uh, but uh, again, that kind of commitment, initial two crore rupees, who wants to put on the table? Those have been ready since I think 2009. So, in fact, the first uh, seminar on this subject happened in this AISS around two years back where we first shared the data that what is the Indian contribution till now. So there are around 4,000 authors in IDF. The number of authors from India is 80. There are 8,000 standards in IDF. Around, we have around 160 standards uh, in the name of the Indians. In last few years, if you see, we have contributed and there are 21 standards who are from people from India. Okay. So even in the percentage terms, you have to, you don't stand anywhere. 2%, 3%, that is the average rate of participation. The advantage which we have is that for any, any technology, the scale can be experimented only in India. And IDF primarily is very implementation oriented. So if you have something which you have worked upon and have failed, that is a very good input for the IDF. So uh, this time we were able to organize 8 remote hubs, uh, more than 500 people participated there. Uh, IDF Labs uh, is something which we are working upon as a concept. Where we, because the colleges which where we are going with I, they are ready to offer space for doing some kind of R&D. Okay. But they want a specific focus on which subject they want to do this kind of R&D. So we have created this concept of IDF Labs. 
So from industry perspective, if you want something to be done as part of R&D, it can be done there by the students. One of the areas which we have identified is network traffic, isn't it, uh, on this subject. So, and that bit for IDF is again a big thing. So, that, that's what I wanted to share that what has been done in the context of bringing this community together till now, in the last one year. <coughs> and then, if you can suggest whether this is good enough, we want to move ahead in some other direction. Uh, one question. So, uh, just uh, whenever any university or any college is participating in this kind of event, so uh, obviously the college will recognize the facility, uh, the faculty will recognize the students' contribution. But what about the industry's recognition uh, for those kind of experiments? So I have seen that when we, uh, uh, we go to the uh, they are uh, when we are doing this kind of study or contribution, the industry recognize that. But that is not the case of Elephant in the industry. So how are we going to push for that as well? If I may answer this question and Anupam will uh, add to that. So it's a very chicken story. So show the contribution, tell them what it makes and probably uh, ring the bell at the right uh, level and from right way as well. So, so this is just the initial uh, that ground level things are happening. We are trying to reflect that into this summit and this summit as well as we have been. So there is some co commercial uh, uh, equation of this summit is here. I wanted to do something big uh, as part of this, but then it has to fit into that. At least we have been uh, getting some uh, way out for this one. So, uh, how to raise the level of this awareness and reach out to the respective leadership and which way it should be led? But um, I see this has a more, this can be bringing more success stories from us as compared to ISO because ISO, we know all there is a one bottleneck that we have to address it every time. And that's what we have been say, looking at. But here is the internet contribution. And I think probably that will create a lot of such a story. But I don't know we'll talk about this, uh, how to look at this. Yes, so with this aspect, the way we are trying to address is we are reaching out to CIOs and the people who are who understand standards and protocols in individual organizations. And we are asking them that what is that which is your expectation from your people who are going to contribute in IDF and all. So do you think do you connect with this idea? Number one question. If the answer is no, there is no further questions. Okay. But if yes, uh, what is your expectation from the people and then they should participate, they should contribute, they should be observer? What do you want? So we are trying to collate this information from higher ups in the industry. That is an exercise which is in making. Okay. Nothing has been achieved. In fact, before coming here, I was with Rahul Kuzai. So he is from the government is also saying that he is going to approach the CIOs and other people in the industry to exactly find out that why should government invest in IT. Okay. So that is the answer which he is looking for. I will just add to it. See, uh, as an IDF contributor myself, right? what I see is if you are contributing in IT, people in industry who basically know about IT values it or not. That means that you you understand the technology which you are working on and you have to sending a mail on IDF mailing list is not a joke. Right? Because people who basically contribute to that mailing list are somebody who has huge amount of experience behind them. And they will not take shit at all. I mean they will just say the point and uh, say in your face, please so get out of this mailing list. This is a very, uh, very modest way modest to say that. So, what I have found is that industry people values idea contribution a lot. Even if you have actually read an RFP and commented on it, even if you have read through a draft which is being proposed and commented on it, saying that, okay, can we do it this way? Even whether somebody takes your suggestion or not, but able to do that itself is, has a huge value. Okay, so, and probably uh, we also need to uh, create from the profession side as well. Contribution to this should be recognized as a professional competence as well. I think that's something that I think I saw or IT should also be trying to look at. The contribution to this should have. So one thing, one thing which we are able to do with IT and secretary is for the, all the remote participants, we are working to have a certificate which is digitally signed by IT. So at least that is the first step uh, for all the remote participants. Secondly, in terms of contribution into the actual space, it is too early to find a value in terms of in the eyes of the seniors. 
primarily at this point of time, people will have to do it in terms of their professional skills. So, people who are interested in doing that, they, I think they will take the lead. Yeah. I'd just like to add over here. Yeah. It's more of a passion driven thing. Why yeah. do you do aeromotics? Why do you do stamp collection? It's a passion driven I could only recall three days in the line. Kabir Banu, Dunya, the Jab Market, which are in here. Sorry, I have a suggestion to make it. Incentivization should be there if suppose somebody is really coming to IIT here. So his compensation, his promotion should be related to that. That will definitely add a lot of value. And how to do that is another challenge. Because the professional institution like ISAGA, ISS, they have been doing it. They are talking to recruiters, they are saying you put our certification there, make that as a kind of compulsory. That's why people are picking it. So something like this contribution is a very important community contribution. How to? concept itself that there needs something to be done at the ground. The next uh, uh, was what I was looking from government was uh, keeping their firm commitment on hosting of ITF. So from now once this bubble has started we need a rallying point. Okay. So 2018 if we fix, if we bid and we get it then we do the entire capacity development participation and run for that. So that is the commitment which we are looking from the government. The meeting really helps because then meeting here is many people can come and uh, that also reflects uh, to the eyes of the global community as well. So meeting really could be very critical stepping stone towards that one. You have something to Yeah, yeah. I really appreciate uh, like uh, until now we were reading the RFCs, and the RFCs and now How to locate such, such individuals? Uh, I think it, it is it is a very difficult task. One of the suggestions that I can propose is like the, uh, in corporates, we have specific engineering groups who are highly technical. How to connect those guys to this uh, tool yeah. is, is very helpful. I come from foreign business services. It is uh, an ISP. We will provide it. one of the largest uh, we will provide it in the world. So we use this for you. Maximum of the and again they are certain uh, the RFCs and standards. So we also have a great deal of people for highly talented and technical. So is there a way uh, by your organization? So the awareness session which we are doing for the colleges and universities, we are also making for corporates. Okay, so anytime if you want, uh, we'll exchange cards and all. So we are ready to come and give an one hour presentation how to get it what. But uh, and, uh, two hour that is putting up some RFCs that how the contribution has been made over a period of time. So we can we, are, we can do that anytime. So we just there needs to be an intent uh, to be there, we'll be there. So I think uh, that's we are close the closure now. But so this meeting is another continuation of something that we can do. I'm not sure okay, how much it will help to the overall cause, but at least some awareness. And uh, uh, thanks to Bharat and uh, Anupam, they keep pushing us. So somebody has to push us and drive us as well. So they keep pushing us and driving us in this um, this agenda. Uh, definitely, the meeting happens that will really get uh, great thing for the country as a whole. But then. Uh, 
we are need to create this messaging and we need to create take this to the, the proper bit level so i put uh, this one call for action uh, uh, session uh, which is not some person which is not just talking about that one i put this one into his sajin diary that um, as a last call as a dsi we should be talking to the industry and telling them that this is the area that we should be focusing our attention on so if you are talking about now you are being transferring our journey from the services to product and that's what you are saying uh, product is a new way a new probably growth story for us then this we can't neglect like this uh, and if you are really proactive in this one then probably definitely have a contribution in this area will definitely be able to rise and that will be reflecting into the overall story that we have been creating as a making india start up in india kind of thing so with this uh, 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 thanks uh, yeah last question sir. So if you call can drop your car, I think uh, that is a better way to learn. So because we don't have much time now. Uh, so the latest I can share. The latest one is the price. Where they are. Where they are trying to see that, or the top which is there is that how to incorporate privacy when the traffic is moving over the internet. Okay. So while we are talking privacy at the implementation at the user stage, we are trying to see that whether the privacy can be inbuilt into the packet itself. So that is the latest deprived uh, working group. So uh, if you go to the ITF website, there are number of working groups which are very active. So it depends upon your area of interest. Broadly, it is classified into eight areas: transport, routing, uh, and inter internet application routing. So basically, there are two more things, as he said, right? There are two more interesting things which is happening, and one is something they are coming up with a working group for IoT, right? And another is core networking. And the the third one basically is most of these the working group gets created based on the as I said, right? And the IoT of will basically keep doing research where they are going. As he said, the deploy has come from that. And there is another thing which is happening in the configuration part. Netcon, basically, there is a working group. So uh, there are a lot of devices, different devices, and they want basically one single protocol to talk to each of them and then configure. Because SNMP hasn't worked, so they have come up with something called NetConf and YAML. Uh, yes, thank you. So there are a lot of such things. I mean, as the Anupam said, right? That whatever you are interested in, I'm sure if it is something with internet, IT will have that particular. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. We all have to move to the main prime ballroom now. So that is the last phase of the AISS. So we have the, some keynote special talk and more importantly the NP session as well. And we will be concluded by Mr. Devdas Patnai, who has been known for the key speaker in the uh, various subjects as well. Yes. So I will ask you to meet my course also. <laughs> So we, what we did was we created awareness camps. Uh, then the model which we applied was that once this awareness camps were created, we created a conference on the line of IDF itself. Okay. So we said that you submit papers on the existing protocols. So out of the college students and university students, suddenly you can't expect them to give a complete new protocol. So we asked them to go back, study HTML, study XMPT, and come back with what we have understood. Okay, so till now we have got around 48 papers on those lines, and we have identified three or four sparks, and there are people uh, that, that, that who have contributed, who have started contributing into the idea after this IIC, because they now know that there is a forum. Okay, uh, then we have around uh, we have completed like this seminars, four seminars till now. Uh, so those numbers are really good. And these 640 people are hardcore technology oriented people who are interested in IT. So they come and register on this website. Okay. And this is a mailing list uh, where you can get involved and suggest uh, what you want to do for it. And then we have around 12 institutions which have already partnered with us in terms of hosting this awareness camps uh, or hosting IIC meetings. Some of them even have taken that as part of their annual calendar. So automatically next year it will be ready for without much effort. So that's how it is planned to grow. Now this is some of the pictures we did. We started from Guwahati. Uh, then we 
very good information uh, our the capita then we entered into and interestingly when we approached iits and uh, the indian institute of sciences we were asked to go out and completely never come back okay because and the reaction was hamare paas 4 crore 5 crore ka itna sara sarkar ka project hai ya first we were not giving any money to them secondly we are asking them to host a conference okay so so iits and indian institute of sciences were the ones who completely asked us to go back and never come back. Uh, go out and never come back. okay which was very shocking and it is very i am very glad to share that now iit kharagpur is coming up and saying that we want to host uh, this kind of conference in kharagpur but initially the leg work of going to these colleges experience was very bad to the extent of being protected okay now so we selected some colleges where we yes please what about the no we have done so so some of these colleges we entered into the interior part of the country okay some of these colleges nobody has heard the name okay mother home institute of technology have been dated as mit so nobody has heard the name okay that we have an mit inside this matter uh, but then the atmosphere when we entered into the college was like electric okay 300 students of all different engineering streams trying to participate in one conference never before okay. uh, so so we found that there is a lot of need if we move outside the cities and this is just a perspective which i have wanted to share that not necessarily you will find good quality it and computer only in the cities it, it can happen in various places yes. so uh, we did it in rti also then we did it with the lot of other colleges uh, uh, in nasa and other places we also uh, and this is a picture of the icb seminar on the lines of ipl where all these people who where we have done awareness camps these colleges are coming together and contributing papers okay so uh, this is we have done to now three uh, of these kind and this is the picture of where we could we were able to get all these contributors together in time okay so bharat i met first time i heard his name i contacted him looked at his picture in linkedin and other places but physical meeting is very important Okay. and that's what we were able to do in uh, october this year where in all the id contributors from bangalore were pulled together in one conference room like this okay and that is was the achievement of the second objective of this program now what came out of bangalore is again very important so what we could understand was that uh, more technical awareness around it that it is completely individual based You don't need to go out. You can contribute sitting at your own table. Okay. Uh, so that kind of awareness needs to be there in the organization itself. So that is one. And then we require huge amount of remote participation to get the first hand feeling that what happens exactly in this kind of meeting before we go and push people to go and attend physical meeting. Because so much work happens on the mailing list that the meeting is just a step ahead. so nobody sets the context of the discussion so they start from there the work was left on the mailing list so if you are not following the mailing list you will become you will not be able to sync up uh, in the physical meeting so that is very important that you have to be party to a mailing list and attend even remotely the meeting which is very relevant to that mailing list that's how you will be able to connect the dots and then we wanted to have a database of itf contributors of indian origin so if you go to itf you will find not many indians but not as if they are from india but they are very sympathetic towards doing anything in india okay so we have not even pulled up that kind of resource list so now so that can be done and the last post itf in india so the earliest as i said we can do it in 2018 uh, but uh, again that kind of commitment Initial two crore rupees who wants to put on the table? Both have been trading since I think 2009. Thirteen. Yeah. So, in fact, the first uh, seminar on this subject happened in this AISS around two years back, where we first shared the data that what is the Indian contribution till now. So there are around 4,000 authors in India. The number of authors from India is 80. There are 8,000 standards in India. Around we have. Around 160 standards uh, in the name of Asians. 
in last few years, if you see, we have contributed and there are 21 standards who are from people from India. Okay. So even in the percentage terms, you have to, you don't stand anywhere, 2%, 3%, that is the average rate of participation. The advantage which we have is that for any, any technology, the scale can be experimented only in India. And IDF primarily is very implementation oriented. So if you have something which you have worked upon and have failed, that is a very good input for the IDF company. So for this time we were able to organize eight remote hubs, uh, more than 500 people participated there. Uh, IDF Labs uh, is something which we are working upon as a concept. Where we, because the colleges which, where we are going with I, they are ready to offer space for doing some kind of R&D. Okay. But they want a specific focus on which subject they want to do this kind of R&D. So we have created this concept of IDF Labs. So from industry perspective, if you want something to be done as part of R&D, it can be done there by the students. One of the areas which we have identified is network traffic, isn't it, uh, on this subject. So, and that bit for IDF is again a big thing. So, that, that's what I wanted to share with what has been done in the context of bringing this community together till now, in the last one year. <coughs> and then, if you can suggest whether this is good enough, do we want to move ahead in some other direction? Uh, I have one question. So, uh, just uh, whenever any or any colleges Even if you have actually read an RFP and commented on it, 
even if you have read through a draft which is being proposed and commented on it, saying that, okay, can we do it this way? Even whether somebody takes your suggestion or not, but able to do that itself is, has a huge value. Okay, so and probably uh, we also need to uh, create from the professional side as well. Contribution to trees should be recognized as a professional competence as well. I think that's something I think I saw our IT should also be trying to look at. The contribution to trees should have. So one thing, okay, one thing which we are able to do with IT as a is for the, all the remote participants, we are working to have a certificate which is digitally signed by IT. So at least that is the first step uh, for all the remote participants. Secondly, in terms of contribution into the actual space, we are just too early to find a value in terms of in the eyes of the seniors. Primarily at this point of time, people will have to do it in terms of their professional skills. So people who are interested in doing that, they are, I think they will take the initiative. Yeah. I just like to add over here. Yeah. It's more of a passion driven thing. Why yeah. do you do aeromotics? Why do you do stamp collection? It's a passion driven I could only recall three days in the client. Kabir Dhanu, Dunya is a job market teacher. I was just saying that incentivization should be there if suppose somebody is really converted to IIT, so his compensation, his promotion should be related to that. That will definitely add a lot of value. And how to do that is another challenge because the professional institution like ISAGA, ISIS, they have been doing it. They are talking to recruiters, they are saying you put our certification there, make that as a kind of compulsory, that's why people are picking it. So something like this contribution is a very important community contribution. How to? So they have contributed in the IT area, they have contributed the draft, then I could convince the senior degree saying this is not the job they are doing, right in the board. This is what they are submitting the draft to their and which is adding value and a letter. The four people will take those drafts and they will implement it. Of course they got a good development. Uh, so it requires to be and what the model you are following I think absolutely right. Yeah. You go to the scale and then pull it and then yeah. Um, what is the strategic take as far as the government perspective on this? Have you spoken to somebody? What is the yeah, yeah, I think our government can be. So the government initially supported this. Uh, so the money for all these conferences and all came from the government of India. Okay, so they supported one of the internet society projects. They funded a very frugal budget, but yes, that was definitely the first seed funding on the concept itself. That there needs something to be done at the ground. The next uh, uh, was what I was looking from government was uh, keeping their firm commitment on hosting of ITF. So from now once this bubble has started, we need a rallying point. Okay. So 2018, if we fix, if we bid and we get it, then we do the entire capacity development, participation and run for that. So that is the commitment which we are looking from the government. The meeting really helps. Because then meeting here is many people can come and uh, that also reflects uh, to the eyes of the global community as well. So meeting really could be very critical stepping stone towards that. You have something to Yeah, yeah. I really appreciate uh, like until uh, now we were reading the RFCs, running the RFCs, and now we, have, we want to contribute to it. I really appreciate uh, the efforts uh, IACB and the uh, CSI. Uh, now, uh, coming back to the point, how to locate such, such individuals, uh, I think it, it, is, it is a very difficult task. One of the suggestions that I can propose is, like uh, uh, in corporate, we have specific engineering groups who are highly technical. How to connect those guys to this uh, yeah. tool is, is very helpful. I come from foreign business services. It is, uh, in ISP, we will provide one of the largest uh, so we use this for humans, maximum number of the different sizes. And again, they are written uh, the RFCs and standards. So we also have a great deal of people for highly talented and technical. So is there a way uh, my organization? So the awareness session which we 
are doing for the colleges and universities, we are also doing for corporates. Okay, so anytime if you want, uh, we'll exchange cards and all. Uh, so we are ready to come and give a one hour presentation how to get it what. But at uh, uh, two hour that is putting up some RFC that how the contribution has been made over a period of time. So we can we are we can do that anytime. So just there needs to be an intent uh, to be there, we'll be there. I think uh, that's we are close to closure now. But so this meeting is another continuation of something that we try to do. I'm not sure how much to help with the overall cost, but at least some awareness. And uh, uh, thanks to Bharat and uh, Anupam, they keep pushing us. So somebody has to push us and drive us as well. So they keep pushing us and driving us in this uh, this agenda. Uh, definitely, the meeting happens that will really get uh, everything for the country as a whole. But then. Uh, we are need to create this messaging and we need to create, take this to the, the corporate level. So I put, uh, there is one call for action uh, 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 session, uh, which is NASCAM president, which is now just talking about that one. I put this one into his agenda as well, that um, as a NASCAM, as a DSCI, we should be talking to the industry and telling them that this is the area that we should be focusing our attention on. So if you are talking about now, we are being transferring our journey from the services to product, and that's what we are saying. Uh, product is a new way, a new probably growth story for us, then this we can't neglect like this. Uh, and if you are really proactive on this one, then probably definitely have a contribution in this area will definitely be able to rise. And that will be reflecting into the overall story that we have been creating as a making India or startup in India kind of thing. So with this, uh, um, uh, uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, last question. So if you talk and talk your car, I think uh, that is a better way to do it. So because we don't have much time now. Uh, so the latest I can share, the latest car is the price. When they are trying to see that, or the talk which is there is that how to incorporate privacy when the traffic is moving over the internet. Okay. So while we are talking privacy at the implementation at the user stage, we are trying to see that whether the privacy can be inbuilt into the packet itself. So that is the latest deprived uh, working group. So uh, if you go to the IDF website, there are number of working groups which are very active. So it depends upon your area of interest. Broadly, it is classified into eight areas: transport, routing, uh, and internet application, routing. And so basically, there are two more things, as he said, right? There are two more interesting things which is happening, and one is something they are coming up with a working group for IoT, right? And another is core networking. And the the third one basically is most of these these working group gets created based on the as I said, right? And the IoT will basically keep doing research where they are going. As he said, the deprive has come from that. And there is another thing which is happening is the configuration part. Netcon, that there is a working group. So uh, there are a lot of devices, different devices, and they want basically one single protocol to talk to each of them and then configure. Because SNMP has not worked. So they have come up with something called NetConf and YAL. Uh, yes, thank you. So there are a lot of such things. I mean, as the Anun said, right, that whatever you are interested in, I am sure if it is something with the internet, I will have that opportunity. Right? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your time. Thanks for being part of this. Thank you.